In this lesson, we're going to talk about painting a close-up subject. We're taking a photograph, a uh, landscape, basically maybe a street scene, and zooming in and focusing on one area, finding a kind of a center of interest there. And in the procedure, or in the painting procedure, we start in the center of interest, finish it, and then as we pull out, we want to simplify, use less detail, bigger, simpler brush strokes. That creates a more intimate painting, sort of like a still life in some ways, but a still life in a landscape. Now in this lesson, we want to talk about painting a close-up subject. That's when we're zooming in on our reference, uh, picking one area and eliminating a lot more than usual. In other words, we don't have as much background, middle ground, foreground. It's a little more close-up. And when we start a painting that way, different way of approaching painting would be to start at that focal point, finish it, and then as you move out, you simplify more and more, which is different from how we've been painting landscape before, starting in the back, moving forward, blocking in as we go, then going back and adding some detail or broken color in some areas. Here we're finishing our focal point first and then simplifying as we move out. So the two things we want to remember, still to find the shadow pattern that simplifies everything, allows us to see bigger shapes, and helps us find simpler values, which makes mixing color a lot easier. The other thing is where we place the horizon line. When I look at these, I want to think in terms of what I want in the painting. Do I want more foreground? In this case, more of the yard with the different colored grasses, flowers, or do I want more rooftop mountain sky? And that makes a big difference. I can't have both because we're zooming in. We're focusing in on an area. So I generally will have the horizon line either higher or lower. And this is an example here of focusing more on the yard, having more foreground. I really don't want any sidewalk. So I can extend the grass a bit further. But my focal point is right in here, the edge of the wall with the flowers, kind of the little bit of the overhang and some of the roof. That's kind of my focal point here. And you can see it's not half and half because I've decided the foreground, and again, I would get rid of the sidewalk here. I just have the grass extend down. So I'd get rid of that, but I have more yard here and my horizon line is you know somewhere back in here. And you think of the horizon line as the line between the ground and the sky, as if you've scraped everything off the earth and all you have is sky and ground. That's the horizon line, and I'm, you know, it's a guess there, but it's higher, so I have more foreground, less background. And I could zoom in more, but the problem with that is you run the risk of being half and half. In other words, having the horizon line in the center. So if I zoom in more, this creates a composition that's really boring because it's half and half. Half building, wall, half yard. You know, it's right down the middle of there. The horizon line's still kind of high, but not high enough to create my painting from looking like it's cut in the middle. And that's what I want to stay away from. And that's not something we, nor we normally think of. But when you see a painting that is like this, half and half, it just looks boring. There's just no interest in it. So really think about, first of all, the shape of the canvas, of a vertical, a square, a horizontal shape. And then make sure you decide what you want to dominate, more foreground or more background. This is, uh, all these are in Greece, by the way. This is an old Greek farmhouse. And I like the building, the green window, some of the tree, and, and the wall. So that's kind of my focal point you know, right in here, probably a little smaller even. It, it's not always just one object. It could be an area, a smaller area. But I also like the yard in this one. I like more foreground in here. So what I want to do, then when I crop it, and again, you're cropping with either sketchbook or computer. Sketchbook is probably a little more, a little easier because you can really move things around a little bit more. Here I can. I'm stuck with the trees here, the building here, the window here. I would probably move the window over to the left a little bit, maybe move the tree over to the right just a little bit. Just kind of squeeze things. And that's easier to do with the sketchbook. The computer, I can definitely crop it, but I can't squeeze anything. And that works pretty good. And usually after I crop it, I'll see if I can crop it again. Cut off a little bit there, cut off some of the foreground. I don't need to cut off a lot. Also, when I look at this, and we're thinking composition, I want to see what I can do with those straight lines. 
like there's a real straight line here. Of course, the straight line of the building, I don't want to lose that. But I can get rid of the line of the wall there, especially since it's an old wall. So I could lift these rocks up a little bit, maybe drop this wall down here, and just have a bit more wall, a little bit at an angle. Angle down by lifting up these and dropping these down a little bit. Because those straight lines can be pretty static. I especially don't want them to go all the way across the canvas. You can't always get rid of all the straight lines, but you can get rid of some of them. The alternative here, you know, in the last cropping, I had the foreground being the focal, not the focal point, but more dominant in the background. Here I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to cut ri get rid of most of the foreground and have the mountain, sky, and trees be more dominant. And that works well, again, because the ground down here is below halfway. Now, the, the house is halfway, so I have to do something with that in my painting. Either lift it up a bit more, like to here, and then again, I can lift these shapes of these trees up and mountains wherever I want. But I do want to get this out of the center. But the foreground is a lot less, and now the, the background is bigger. But we're still z zooming in. This is still my focal point. And I would finish that first, and then as I move away, I would use bigger, simpler brush strokes and keep things very, very simple. This kind of close-up subject painting is, is more center of interest oriented. I don't care nearly as much about the background, some of the foreground. They're very suggested. They're important in the fact that they're shapes and value and color. But all my detail, or 75% of my work in the painting, is going to be in the focal point area. I also want to think about, again, the um, shadow pattern. I'm going to zoom in to the bottom here a little bit more. As I compose here, getting more foreground, that's my shadow pattern. And I have really created a lot more of a big pattern than what the photograph gives me. And this makes it easier to paint. Now, there is no shadow on the wall here or a little bit over here, but hardly any at all. So by creating a bit more, it creates a bigger shadow pattern in the overall painting. And also doing more shape in the tree, more pattern in the tree. You can see I really pull together the darks a lot more. If I can see the darks that big and simple, it makes it easier to paint. This is a lot easier to paint than that tree. Most of the time you have to pull together the darks and the lights into bigger, simpler shapes. Now when I paint with color and start to break it up in the block or after the block in, I will have maybe two or three different values in the shadow. But see it as one shape, one value, and keep it there for as long as you can. Now eventually you have to break up the value because it's just flat being one value. But it's important to see it this simple first. And I think most paintings are successful or not because you could you had a vision for the painting as a painting. You can see it as a painting from the photograph. If I have a reference in front of me and I'm looking at it and I have a hard time visualizing it as a painting, you usually really struggle with it. They're not as successful. Now this one again has a nice shadow pattern to it, nice darks. The uh, darks up here in the tree and in the foliage of the flowers is very busy. So when I find that shadow pattern. I want to push it more. I want to really create a pattern that shows the shape of the tree better, shape of the greens and the plants better. Too busy here. Not enough shape and form. The darks seem too random. So four shapes in there that work better. Now again, these darks are going to change in value. The darks on the pots are going to be lighter than the darks in the greens. And the steps will be, or the step here will be lighter than the shadow on the pot. So there's vi there's variations within the shadow, but see it this way first. And same thing here, I've cropped this, becomes more of a square. My horizon line is probably up in here. I've got a bit more background, the, ver the vertical part, the background, then I do the foreground. I could change that, I could crop it a bit more, but I wanted more of the tree and a little less of the foreground. And again, you can continue to crop and, and see what other compositions you can get. If I zoom in a bit more and make this a vertical instead of a square, that's also going to work. It has nice shapes in it, Very, the pattern still holds together real well. It has a good shadow pattern that leads the viewer's eye around. And my focal point would be right in this area, or it could be here with some of the flowers, so I can vary it a little bit. These are too close to the edge to be considered 
more focal point. I mean, they'll be there, but I won't spend as much time on them as I would these here. Really think through how you crop, what shape you want, vertical, horizontal, whether you want the top part of the painting to be dominant or the bottom. Now, in this photograph, I've zoomed in quite a bit. Most of my photographs are wide angle because I know I'm going to get them home and I'm going to crop and uh, create different compositions out of it. This one I zoomed in, I've got more of the top part of the painting, less of the bottom. So it's cropped well that way. But I want to zoom in a bit more. And I see this as more of a vertical, just because of the tall, the wall, the chair, the door. And I don't want all the door, all the chair, all the plant. But I'll crop some of the plant, some of the door. And I'll still have more wall than in the foreground. I like the dappled lighting in the foreground, but that's going to be smaller than the top part of the painting. You know, I can't have it half and half because that really destroys the composition. I'd get rid of this tree trunk right here. I'd get rid of this sign, maybe have a little dappled lighting on the wall. Of course, my focal point would be most of the chair, maybe a little bit of the plant, and that's what I'll spend most of my time on. In my sketchbook, I would probably move this over a bit to the left, just a tiny bit, so it's not too centered. I don't want the center of the painting to be between the plant and the chair. So I probably have the center moving the chair over here, puts the center just off center of the chair. Just fits a little bit better. I don't want the center of the canvas be between the plant and the chair. It'll just look like you're dividing your canvas in half. Same thing with the top and bottom thing. I want the top to dominate or the bottom. I can't have it in the middle. So stay out of the middle when you're separating top and bottom and side to side. Now this one has been cropped already. I cropped it when I photographed it. I zoomed in and I would probably make the decision to have the top part a little more dominant than the bottom, but I do want some of the bottom because I don't want the stairs to be cut off at the bottom of the canvas. So I want to show some of the flat plane. Otherwise it's kind of floating. So when I crop here, I've got more vertical, less flat plane down there. So here's my flat plane and there's my vertical. So my separation is right here. It's very top heavy, not much bottom, but it isn't in the center, which is good. And I like the shape of the plant here, the tree. So I didn't want to crop that off by having more foreground and less of the building. And the shadow pattern here is real strong, real evident. I could see moving this another pot over here that's kind of half sunlight, half shadow on the steps, have a little bit more dramatic lighting in there. But the shadow pattern is pretty much there. I mean, that's the whole green is, is dark, the shadow is part of the pattern, and so on. So that's, I've composed it with the camera and didn't have to do too much cropping. So think in terms of shape, horizontal, vertical shape, or square. And then where you want that center line. Do you want it up high where you have more foreground or down low where you have more of the background or top of the painting? It's not always background. And then that shadow pattern. Get that shadow pattern nailed down, simplify it, make it large, and decide where your focal point is. Start there, finish that, whatever finish means, you know, not too much detail, but that's your focal point, has the most detail. Then as you spread out, it gets more and more simple. Now my thumbnail drawing, the more abstract I can think of it, the easier. And got one value for the dark, then the uh, papers, my light. So just one dark, one light. A little bit of outline to suggest some of the trees and shrubbery, but I don't have to worry about pots, any detail at all. But this helps me draw it on the board.